You might want to take a moment to pause the video and reread the problem before listening on. We have two parallel plate capacitors that are each connected in parallel to a 10 volt battery. So we've gone ahead and we've drawn that simple circuit right here. We've got our 10 volt battery and our parallel plate capacitors connected in parallel. And what we're going to do first is we're going to combine these two parallel capacitors into a single equivalent capacitor. And we can do that because whenever we have a certain number of capacitors in parallel, to get the equivalent capacitance, we simply sum the individual capacitance values. So in this case, we could say that the equivalent capacitance is equal to the six microfarad capacitance plus the other six microfarad capacitance. And of course, the equivalent capacitance would therefore be 12 microfarads. So we're going to redraw the circuit, but we're going to combine these two capacitors into a single equivalent capacitor. Now, once we've done that, we can calculate the total amount of charge that is stored on this capacitor. The battery provides a potential difference, and that potential difference sends charges flowing through the circuit. Those charges accumulate on each plate, one plate being positive, the other negative. So to get the total charge stored on this equivalent capacitor, we take the capacitance, or rather the equivalent capacitance, and multiply that by the potential difference across the plates, which is supplied by the battery. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to plug in the equivalent capacitance as well as the potential difference. And when we compute this, we can see that the total charge stored on the capacitor, the equivalent capacitor, is 120. And since we used microfarads, this would actually be in microcoulombs. So that's how much charge is initially stored on our equivalent capacitor. But now we go back and we read that, oddly, one of the capacitors is squeezed so that its plate separation is 50% of its initial value. That's kind of an interesting little statement here. Well, what effect does that have on the capacitance? If you squeeze the plates together and decrease their separation by 50%, what is the new capacitance? Well, we can get an understanding of that by examining the following equation for a parallel plate capacitor. Now we can see that the capacitance is dependent on a couple of different items, but the item in question right now is the plate separation. Now again, that plate separation is 50% of its initial value. So basically what's happening is we're multiplying this distance between the plates. We're multiplying that by one half. You have to ask yourself, well, what does that do to the capacitance? If I multiply the denominator by one half, what happens on the other side of the equation? And because they are inversely proportional, what happens is the capacitance is multiplied by the reciprocal. So in other words, it's multiplied by two. So now the capacitance has been doubled, and that's true for one of the capacitors. So what we're going to do is we're going to redraw our circuit, but for one of the capacitances, we're going to double its value. So now the question is, well, what impact does that have on the amount of charge that this circuit can store? And we can proceed by the same steps that we did earlier. We can say that the equivalent capacitance is the sum of the individual capacitance values. So this time when we sum them, we have an equivalent capacitance of 18 microfarads. So that creates an equivalent capacitance. We can draw it. And there is our new circuit there. We can calculate the total charge in the same manner that we used earlier. We can say that the total charge stored on our equivalent capacitor is equal to the capacitance, the new capacitance in this case, multiplied by the potential difference. And so now the total amount of charge stored here is actually going to increase. It's going to increase up to 180 microcoulombs. So now we can answer the question because the question, sort of oddly, there's two parts, but they're basically asking the same thing. It says, how much additional charge is transferred to the capacitors? What is the increase in the total charge stored on the capacitors? Well, to me, those are the same question. So we know that originally we stored 120 microcoulombs of charge, and now we have 180 microcoulombs of charge. So the increase in charge would be the final amount of charge subtracted by the initial amount of charge. And so this becomes the answer to both parts A and B. It's 60 microcoulombs. So by taking the one capacitor and shrinking its plate separation, we are able to increase its capacitance, which in turn increases the amount of charge that this circuit can store. And so that is indeed the correct answer to both parts of the question.